And yet these values are under attack, and the bearer of those values, Israel, is under attack. Israel faces challenges faced by no other nation. First and foremost is the challenge of preventing Iran from developing nuclear weapons. We have to ensure that this regime, which is the world's leading sponsor of terrorism, a regime that shamelessly denies the Holocaust, a regime that talks about wiping Israel off the face of the earth, we must ensure that such a regime does not acquire the weapons of mass death. Second, we must ensure that we achieve a peace that is anchored in security. My friends, the only peace will, that will endure is a peace that we can defend. A peace that we cannot defend will not endure. But a peace that we can defend is the one that holds promise for our peoples. We must not repeat the mistakes of the past. When Israel left Lebanon, Iran moved in. When Israel left Gaza, Iran moved in again. We cannot afford to have that mistake repeated with the same consequences a third time. We cannot afford a third Iranian presence on the hills overlooking Tel Aviv. And what that means is that we must ensure that any future Palestinian state is effectively demilitarized. Effectively demilitarized doesn't just mean a paper agreement. We've had a lot of agreements, a lot of guarantees from the international community. We had one in Lebanon. It didn't work. We had one in Gaza. It didn't work. Here, we must have effective arrangements on the ground that Israel and Israel alone can vouch for their security and for our security. This is a fundamental principle of peace. The people of Israel are prepared to make compromises for peace, but they are not, and I'm not, prepared to any, make any compromises on our security. Just as we are asked to recognize a nation state for the Palestinian people, the Palestinians will have to recognize Israel as the nation state of the Jewish people. The Palestinians will have to recognize the Jewish state. And the great challenge that faces all of us in every part of the world is to repel the escalating attacks on our legitimacy. And these attacks take place in the United Nations. They take place on a college campus. They take place in the media. And it's important that we fight back against these lies and distortions. What we have to do is merely use the facts, learn the facts, put forward the facts. That is, we must defend the truth in each and every form. And this isn't easy. None of this is easy. I know the challenges we face may seem daunting, but if anyone here has any doubt about our ability, our ability to meet these challenges, Think about what Israel has already achieved. When the state was established, only 5% of our population lived in Israel. Only 5% of the Jewish population in the world lived in Israel. 
Today, nearly half of the world's population live in the Jewish state. Israel began as a poor country. We had nothing. We had sand, swamp, sun, a lot of sun. But we had nothing, practically no natural resources. Today we're a high-tech power. I came here from Paris, where Israel was accepted to the club of developed countries, developed economies, the OECD. Israel's technology, its scientific prowess, the uh, scientific name for that is Seichel. Israel's Seichel is powering the world's computers. Our scientists are winning Nobel Prizes. Our doctors are curing rare diseases. Our agricultural knowledge is irrigating lands in five continents. And we are helping avert disaster victims, trying to give them aid in many parts of the world, most recently in Haiti, in that extraordinary expedition of the Israel Defense Forces. We can seize the future because we have the hearts and minds to do so. Yet we also know that we face challenges that are unique. Alone among the nations, Israel is openly threatened by annihilation. Alone among the nations, Israel must constantly defend its very right to exist. But we are a people who alone have defied the iron laws of history. We've defeated enemies many times our size, enemies that were bent on our destruction. We've overcome terrorists that obey no moral code. We have that capacity in us. And after thousands of years, we restored our sovereignty in our ancient homeland. We revived an ancient language, Hebrew. And we've ingathered exiles from across the world. We realized our ancient dream to rebuild our ancient capital, Jerusalem. You know, I, I try to explain foreign visitors who come to my office, dignitaries, ministers, prime ministers, Presidents, they come to my office and I, I want to give them an understanding of the, the depth of our connection to this land and to this city. And I show them a signet ring that was used by a Jewish official 2,700 years ago. It's on loan to me from the Department of Antiquities. And this ring, it's a seal. Uh, was found right next to the Western Wall. It actually predates the Western Wall in that vicinity during the time of the Jewish kings. And there's a name described on it in Hebrew, and I can read it. It says, Netanyahu. Netanyahu ben Yoash. And that's my last name. My first name, Benjamin, goes back a thousand years earlier when Jacob and his sons, including Joseph and Benjamin and the other forebears of the tribes of Israel, walked on those very hills next to that very city. No people has a connection to its capital city the way that Israel, that the Jewish people have a connection to Jerusalem. It's a unique connection. It cannot be denied.